Hello and welcome to another DaVinci Resolve tutorial. Today we are focusing on node trees. I want this to be a quick and smooth tutorial focusing only on node tree structures, so we won't be delving into the detailed mechanics of each tool. Instead, we'll concentrate on the strategic logic behind constructing effective node trees, like which node goes first uh, when we use parallel nodes or how we stack up nodes. In other words, I'm gonna give you the whole logic behind node trees so you understand how to organize and also apply them to streamline your color grading workflow. By the end of this guide, you'll be ready to build your own node trees and enhance your grading techniques in DaVinci Resolve Studio. Let's get started and unlock your full potential as a colorist. Okay, let's start by setting up our project first. We are working in DaVinci YRGB with a color space transform CSD workflow. This means we are not using DaVinci Resolve's automatic color management. Our input color space is set to DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate and our output is Reg 709 Gamma 2.4. Remember, getting these settings right lays the groundwork for everything that follows. Now quickly touching on CSD nodes, we are converting from camera input to DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate and then from DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate to Rec 709 Gamma 2.4 uh, with tone mapping set to a maximum of 10,000 nits. In the first four nodes, our aim is to establish a solid foundation by adjusting exposure, balance, contrast and saturation. This primary grading step is incredibly important because this is where about 80% of color work takes place. By establishing the right contrast levels first, we ensure that subsequent adjustments build on a strong visual uh, foundation. By the way, if you want to use this exact node tree in your own projects uh, after watching this tutorial, feel free to click on the link in the description below and download the power grade so you can install it into your DaVinci Resolve and use it in your own projects. Now, when it comes to adjustments, it's crucial to start with contrast adjustments first. Uh, for this, I use gain wheel as my contrast and offset wheel as my pivot. Beginning with contrast helps to deepen the color richness and dynamic range of the image, uh, which in turn often uh, enhances perceived saturation. So, in other words, a lot of times contrast does the trick and we do not need to uh, play with the saturation at all. Next, I adjust the exposure and balance my image using the offset wheel in the HDR panel. For handling saturation, I specifically utilize the HSV color space. Uh, to do that, we change the color space to HSV first. This affects only this node, by the way. And then deselect channels 1, which is hue, and then uh, 3, uh, value. With this setup, our gain wheel now solely adjusts uh, saturation, which gives us precise control over color intensity without affecting other properties. Moving on to refinements, I often use parallel nodes here. Uh, parallel nodes are effective uh, because they all fed from the same solid foundation that we just established here. And more importantly, they allow us to apply multiple color corrections or effects simultaneously to the same image. Uh, in other words, the key advantage here is that these corrections do not affect each other. This in contrast to layer nodes where each correction can significantly affect subsequent adjustments, meaning changes made in one node, let's say, can dictate the adjustments needed in the next. For now, do not worry about layer nodes. Uh, a lot of times you will be using parallel nodes, uh, just like here. You can use these parallel nodes to make temperature adjustments, for instance. For this, I use the temperature slider in the HDR panel. You can have a parallel node for highlights, where I again use the HDR wheel to subtly adjust brightness in key areas without affecting overall exposure. Additionally, a log adjustment node can be good as it allows for precise shadow and highlight control, helping to enhance the details in dark and bright areas without compromising midtones. For this one, you will be using the log wheels in the primary wheels panel. The next parallel node can be a curves node, for instance, for making further adjustments to the contrast and look. 
And finally, a warper node can be used to tweak individual colors and their saturation levels, uh, giving us even finer control over the color grading process. Anyway, I think you understand my point. Uh, we use these parallel nodes for secondary adjustments uh, to fine tune our image. You may add new tools here or delete or change these ones depending on what your project needs. After these parallel nodes, I usually slide in an extra serial node and label it trim. Think of this as your safety net for any last minute tweaks you might need uh, after laying down our solid foundation and making those secondary refinements. Next comes another set of parallel nodes in my node tree. Uh, I use these ones for advanced grading like power windows, face refinements uh, or depth mapping which is, by the way, a great tool for distinguishing uh, between the foreground and background, giving you the flexibility to adjust each area independently. Put two, three or even more parallel nodes here, depending on your needs. And if you want to know the details about the tools I mentioned uh, and how I use them, feel free to check out my other workflow tutorials. Uh, you can find the link on the top right corner. In the final stages of our node tree, uh, we focus on look development. Following our output CST, uh, I usually add a, a Kodak 2383 film look plot. Uh, to do this properly, we first convert to a Sneon film log here using another CST node and then add the Kodak 2383 film look plot. Then I create a compound node uh, so I can precisely control the lot's intensity without revealing the Sneon film log transform. And the final node right before the output CST is our film look crater. This tool is loaded with various effects like bleach, bypass, halation, bloom, winged and grain. You can also use it to give some split toning effect here. So that makes our complete node tree structure with only using DaVinci Resolve's built-in tools. Remember, the key to successful color grading is understanding how each adjustment affects the image and also building up your corrections gradually. Each node plays a crucial role and by stacking them logically, you create a powerful grading workflow that's both effective and efficient. Well, stay tuned for more detailed explanations on each node in our upcoming videos. I'll see you in the next one.